Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. This is Create with Friends, and today we're going to talk about being lonely, looking for maybe a spouse, a partner, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, who knows what could be happening. And why are we talking about this? Um, we're talking about this problem because there are so many people that arrive to 30, 40, they have a brilliant career, they have the money, they have a house, the boat, the yacht, everything, but they come home to an empty house. And they wonder, what's wrong with me? I'm intelligent, I'm smart, I'm, I'm a loving person, I'm wonderful, I help people, I'm in the community, I am spiritual, I'm healthy, but I don't have anyone. And um, so this may be the cause of some loneliness and feeling that we're not good enough or something is wrong with us. And they might lead to desperation in the end. <clears throat> Therefore, today I have invited a specialist to my program as part of my Christmas gift for you guys to help you. As I told you, the 12 episodes of Christmas for you guys. And today we have Renata Gomide coming from sunny Spain today, but originally from Lith Lithuania. Did I pronounce this correctly, right? Yes. So welcome to the show, Renata. Thank you, Franz, for having me. It's a pleasure. Yeah, it's so good to have her. She is an RTT therapist, but also a hypnotherapist, and you also do probably uh, advanced conversational hypnosis and whatever else. What else do you do? <laughs> <laughs> Correct. A bit of everything, yeah. A bit of everything, but okay. yeah. You are specialized now in relationships and you are going to talk to us about, first of all, let's go straight through what are the symptoms of this loneliness because you will see that these high-flying CEOs and career women and whatever, they don't come out and say, I'm lonely. No, they will say, I don't need anyone. I'm quite happy as I am. Thank you very much. So what are the, the real symptoms? What are the things that tell you? Yeah, mm -hmm. there's going on there. It's your, your time now. <laughs> okay, perfect. I think you described very well um, in the introduction, and that's usually the scene uh, from which people come to see me. You know, they are fulfilled in their life in other areas. Uh, so they have a career, they have their money, and, uh, you know, they are traveling the world, and um, they are perhaps, you know, into self-development and they've done the healing and all that. And yet they find themselves alone, no one to share their wonderful life with. And that, of course, comes with these deep feelings of loneliness and what you said, what's wrong with me? Why I'm not able to co-create these relationships that are perhaps healthy, or I'm actually getting into relationships that are not healthy, that are exhausting, that are toxic, and they just can't get out from that um, loop, basically, of repeating something that doesn't serve them, something that they, they know um, is not taking them to where they want to be and how they want to feel in their lives. And so, yeah, it is a phenomenon that you know, um, let's say in that, I don't know if you call it middle age or not, 30s, 40s, especially women that one day they wake up and they realize, okay, I've got it all, you know, and uh, I love myself and nothing is kind of lacking. But the prospect, for example, of having a family is getting very thin, of having their own children, for example, is getting very thin because the clock is ticking and there is no man around. So, you know, this is something that people, even now I feel getting into that deep grief, even as like, this is the life that I perhaps will never have and won't be able to create, for example despite having all that other joy <laughs> and happiness. So it is um, becoming very, what I see, a massive, massive disconnection between, you know, two beautiful polarities, which is obviously women and men, and they just can't find 
the common grounds to get together and like I said, in the nature is the most natural thing, right? Um, just getting together and 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 procreating or, or like getting your species into thriving and things like that. But when it comes to humans, we are like, oh my God, I don't know how on earth I'm still not able to do that. So even, you know, I said about, uh, I always share, uh, stories of my clients but today I felt uh, I, I felt called to to share perhaps my story like in in little facts you know if I were sat in the therapist's office being a client and telling them my upbring upbringing and what kind of traumas I had and it's like okay father is out of the picture stepdad was um, you know alcoholic and violent and mother with narcissistic tendencies and like all these kind of things uh, that I experienced growing up it would make sense to a therapist if I tell the story um, why I can't create uh, healthy relationships you know what I mean so but my story is different I am in a healthy relationship I actually managed to find a person who I love, who loves me back, who is, you know, willing to grow together, heal together and all that and co-create that relationship that we both cherish together every day, show up for that, you know. So um, it makes, to me, makes no sense why other people can't do it. So this is where we kind of go back to what kind of stories do we embody? What kind of stories do we tell ourselves? What kind of beliefs we carry? You know, and I see a lot of these kind of conflicting beliefs in my clients when they say, I really feel lonely. I, I need someone next to me, someone to come back home to you know, someone to share my life in that deeply shared relationship and have that connection that we are looking for. Um, but then I have that belief that, oh, all men are like this. All men are cheaters or all men are stupid. Uh, you know, it's like kind of, okay, so what are you, what are you waiting for? Like somebody to come and prove you wrong? <laughs> that yeah. it's, it's not like that <laughs> it's a blanket statement and um we yeah. really talked with paul wilson we recorded two days ago so they will be next week coming up and we talked about these limiting beliefs that are there we form them before we even think about it we hear something over and over we have one or two bad experiences we repeat the cycle and then we make the assumption blanket statement that Every single person who does that is that. So that's it. Yeah. We have these new two neurons that wire together, fire together. So therefore, they don't stand a chance with us because we made our decision. Yeah. And in the end, we're closing all these doors. And so it's very, very difficult statistically to find the person that we want. In fact, um, I don't know if you ever watched a, a TED talk about the maths of love. Mm -hmm. And um, I expect everyone to... Uh, go and watch it on YouTube if they really want to know the statistics. And it was yeah. a really fun talk from, I think it was like a Jewish woman in Michigan or New York or something. And she was like, all right, I'm 30 something and I can't get anyone. Why is it easy? And she goes, well, I'm not looking just for somebody. It has to be a man. So half of the population out. And I'm in Michigan. So there's only so many people. <laughs> Right, then it has to live in my city because I cannot travel. Whoa, I'm going back to 100,000 yeah. people. It has to be this age to the age, Ooh, smaller. It has to have at least a degree smaller. It has to be Jewish. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it has to have that much of money. It has to have that kind of status. It has yeah. to look like that. So it's, it's like, impossible. yeah, limiting, limiting, limiting yourself into that narrow, 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 where it's like, okay, I'm not going to even give a chance to somebody out of that perception, come into my life and perhaps, you know, give me what I'm looking for, because I have that very rigid, very narrow kind of idea 
how this should work out for me. And then you are just so limiting your your possibilities to to find what you're looking for. So and it's also, you know, what you mentioned statistically, this is this is a big, big issue, especially in that age group where um you know, men in that age group are easily going to find a younger woman if they want to, because to be honest, the bar is so low now, <laughs> you know, men are happy to date down, but women are not happy to do that. They always date and marry up, you know, that's the tendency. So if they already had a relationship before, they were married before, they perhaps are divorced now, or they had some kind of significant relationship before, they learned their lesson, they're not gonna go down. They want to marry up, you know, that's just how we work as women. And so the pool is getting really, really tiny. And then every woman in that age group is chasing that particular type of man that is established, that has that kind of uh, amount of income, that has that kind of house and that kind of car and all these things, you know, where the biggest proportion of men available, perhaps they don't fit that list exactly, but they have so much more to offer. Women don't even look at that. They're like, nah, I want this. I want that prince. And are you aware that competition is humongous to get that one prince? You know, you have to start looking at reality <laughs> instead of fantasy you know yeah and uh, we're not for even one second saying you should settle for a man that is maybe addicted to porn or is on drugs or has been homeless for years he can't get a job he cannot hold a job or is abuser no yeah we're of course not saying that you'd rather be lonely or alone happily alone then going into another toxic relationship. Of what course. we're talking about is different. It's just looking at maybe um, why do we have these very, very high standards? Are they standards or are they just protective mechanisms? Mm -hmm. um, you know, so we're worried about something else. So how do you find a resolution? So a person goes to you and say, oh, I'm 45. I don't have children, probably never have, but I would love to have, you know, a spouse. And so how do you start working with them? What will be their way out of this problem? Yeah, of course, every, uh, as you know, being therapist yourself, um, every, every person is different, every situation is unique and all that. But in general, we would begin from looking at very important question, what do you want? Because a lot of women that I ask, what do they actually want? They have some kind of idea that usually is not even theirs. You know, it's either somehow presented by the society that this is what you should be wanting. This is how it is done and all that, you know, when they don't even tune in into themselves. And it's like, what do I uniquely want? You know, and it's not about uh, these kind of materialistic things that's important. Okay, we live on a planet where that's important too. However, like looking at your own values is like what what is so important for you? So values, like what's important for you? For me, it's safety, for example. I need to feel safe in a relationship because... Without it, I cannot be my, my feminine self. I cannot create, I cannot nurture. I cannot be that, you know, feminine essence in a relationship if I don't feel safe. So safety is number one, you know, there is no kind of, uh, and for other people, maybe it's different values. So we look at individual values, what that person is looking for, and what that may look like. So it's not kind of, okay, this is the only way how I can get what I want. And the other thing that we look at is like, are you looking 
for what you want in the places where it's available. Because what we find ourselves in a lot is trying to buy, I, I like to, to use that um, analogy, is trying to buy steak in a vegan shop. We are looking and searching for something that we want in places where it's not available, but we are there investing our energy and demanding it in a way and we are struggling it's like why why that's all happening to me oh it's disappointment again oh they did that again you know it's like that no darling stop going to the vegan shop if you want to buy steak <laughs> <laughs> you know stop wasting your energy there but, so it's yeah. And we also like the the main on on the main scale is kind of you know looking at those subconscious beliefs that we learned from the you know uh, relationships that we were exposed to when we were growing up. What kind of ideas we formed about relationships? Um, what kind of subconscious patterns are running on repetition that you want to get out from? Like taking that person out of the loop and giving them choice again, basically, is something that they cannot see at the moment. So I think this is the most important part of my work is obviously investigating what's going on, why is it the way it is, and then introducing choice again so people don't feel stuck in their situation. Mm, that's great. So um, if... If a person comes to you and they have been maybe abused or in a narcissistic relationship and they're yeah. obviously terrified because initially an abuser would look like anyone else and it will behave quite nicely for a few months. So how do you help a person who has this trauma to overcome the protection feeling mm -hmm. that they have that they have to have these high walls around them? What, what's the way out of that? Because it's not just a limiting belief. This is real trauma. Yeah, yeah, that's obviously the big part of that. Uh, undeniable is how traumatized people are on both sides, whether it's a man and whether it's a woman. Narcissism, um, and I know it's a label we throw around very easily, but it is a real thing. It exists on in both sides, men and women, um, and. Even if it's not narcissism, toxicity, you know, toxic relationships that are normalized in our society is just like, oh, this is how it is, you know, <laughs> like we just uh, being horrible to each other. This is how we relate to each other. No. So, of course, uh, with those significant traumas, definitely needs to take place certain healings. It's not just about the beliefs where it's like, okay, I'm not able to trust people. Doesn't matter, you know, like I've been hurt. So we obviously deal with that. Um, you know, healing the hurt. That takes time. You know, it's not just a mental thing. It's something that needs to be released from the body as well because body keeps the score. <laughs> And the protection mechanism is always there. It's needed. You know, we can't just switch it off and become fearless and just start running around like crazy. So it's it's something that little by little, individually, by healing ourselves, we are also impacting the collective. I think this is how I see it, you know. It is important to take responsibility not for what happened to you, because that is out of your control, but taking responsibility of healing. Because nobody else is going to do it for you. Like the healing is that part that is completely yours to do the way that you do healing. I'm your guide. I will hold space for you. I will be your mirror. I will, you know... Um, give you some kind of uh, possibilities to show what works for you but in the end of the day the healing happens within each person whenever they are ready and the thing with that is that people are ready not a minute before you know 
like that's the moment where they come to internally it's not when somebody else says well you know time to heal up you know clock is ticking that's something that happens to each person individually and then they start looking okay where can i find help who can do it with me not for me but with me you know Mm -hmm. so that's what i see is slowly climbing out of that victim consciousness that most of us are you know one way or another we are operating from that victim consciousness and that's not to say you know horrible things um doesn't happen to people they do um but at the same time we have enormous healing potential within is just commitment to ourselves and like taking that first step of okay i'm ready i'm ready to overcome it because i see how it's not serving me it's not serving perhaps my family maybe i have children and it's not serving what i want to get in the future you know so it is a process with deep traumas absolutely it's not just clicking fingers and it's all gone it takes work it takes effort um but it is absolutely possible and i see examples of that in my practice very often and that gives me so much hope for humanity in general yes i'm sure that everyone will agree we we both have to make efforts to absolutely you know, talk to other people, see people who have our own interests, share ideas, and not just jump into a relationship when we're not ready, or even worse, jumping into a relationship and also see memes on Facebook. Oh, you're going to meet this prince and he's going to fix you, the broken you. And I'm like, <laughs> nah, <laughs> it's not a therapist, you know, you should Sorry. <laughs> fix yourself, go to have therapy. It's a good investment and you will feel so much better. Once you're fixed, then go and date and find somebody because when we're dating we're not a red cross nurse we're not dating to fix anyone we're not dating to change people we should be dating you know that's the final product and we all of course change all the time but we that's what we see that's a package we don't want somebody broken that we have to put together because that's not the purpose of dating isn't it and uh, it yeah. will be a very unbalanced relationship and yet i see Post all the time, oh yeah, I'm like that, but I'm sure when I find a husband, he's gonna fix that. No, darling, it's not gonna fix yeah, it. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, but that's that's what I'm talking about, victim consciousness. That is victim consciousness. I'll be happy when I have husband. I'll be um ready when that and that happens. No, yeah. that's coming from that, you know, okay, somebody will come and fix me up. And I'm not saying that, you know, you have to be a completely healed person in order to have healthy relationships, not at all. To sort of hurt people uh, can get together and start healing together if there is commitment to do that. That is my case, for example. Like when I met my husband, I can't tell that I was all healed up and all ready and, you know, all healthy and all good. No, we were both hurting our own way you know but we made that commitment let's grow together let's learn together this relationship is important let's go for it and when you see effort coming from both sides you know sky is the limit but you cannot do it for somebody and and recently i just talked to one of my clients and he said that i don't want to give up a belief that love cannot heal everything like love can heal everything if that love is received as well if that person that you are trying to bring the love in and sort of hold space for them is not able to receive it they're running away they're not interested in that nothing is going to happen, you know, you will be just pouring it that fixer energy, I'm here to fix, I'm here to fix. And another person is like, I don't want to be fixed. I don't know what you're doing here. 
<laughs> so so it, it has to work both ways yeah that's a great conversation and i guess we could go forever about relationships yeah <laughs> it's a main issue nowadays and so many unhappy unfulfilled people but what would be one tip that you would like to share with the with the audience what can we do today to take the first step towards opening up to a good relationship yeah, I think the first step in in every healing is awareness, is just kind of getting very honest with yourself of what do you want, you know, and looking at what are these things perhaps that is stopping you, whether you feel that there is some kind of trauma that needs to be healed, whether that means that you need to go out and get more social um, and not just sit on the dating apps, swiping right and left, which is just a distraction of your time. Um, I'm probably, I don't know if you know, but I used to work for a dating website for a while and I don't recommend people using them, <laughs> knowing how it works from the inside. Um, Let's do enough. But, uh, definitely we can do that um but it's it's that it's getting in back into you like um that's the first step awareness of what is that missing part that you feel needs to be fulfilled and looking at it not from the external like okay somebody else has to come in and externally fulfill me but kind of getting very curious what can i do today what is the smallest thing that I can do for myself today to kind of start fulfilling that little or big black hole that exists somewhere here in my heart yeah that's a great suggestion and I always think that if you're very sad and lonely and looking a bit desperate and a bit angry a bit acid you're not likely to find a, a wife or a husband because no. you don't you know you're not going to have any, uh, I don't know, what, I don't want to call them vibrations, but you're not going to send a good vibration to anyone. Totally. Yeah? It is energetic work, you know, yeah. like you can do statistics and everything, but it comes back to energy. What kind of energy do you emanate? That kind of, you know, neediness and desperation and all that is going to attract people who are going to feed off that energy. Yeah they're going to find it very delicious. And these are the narcissists, you know, who is just waiting to yeah. put their claws into someone. So, yeah. yeah, the energy of yourself, the what frequency you radiate um, is very, very important. And that's inner work. I think um, I, I wanted to close with this because then the time is going and, and of course, half an hour episode. Uh, but... Isn't that amazing when you see a person and they are in the middle of doing something that they really love, like playing the piano, playing with a pet, mm -hmm. or they're in the garden, or they're painting, or they're running, whatever they like doing. And then they're shining, they're more charming, they are passionate about it, they are so interesting. And so I always say, if you want to be dating, you also want to be talking about these passions that you have to to people and then go if you like gun shooting go into gun groups if you like yeah. go to football go to football that's where you're gonna find your people your passion your interest your vibration your your energy to do something together which when the romance goes down that interest is gonna keep you going because romance is not always 100 percent every single day there are moments when you're like ah, i'm fed up with johnny i'm fed up with mary but when you have that passion together, you like doing your photography works or your upholstery business or you look after kids. I don't know what it is. Whatever makes you passionate, that's going to make you vibrant, more attractive, and you're going to really give this aura of love and attraction. You're going to attract more people. You're going to be a magnet because you're yes. so happy with yes. that. Yes, absolutely yeah, agree right? with that beautiful beautiful advice and absolutely agree with that this yeah. is how you raise your energy and your vibration yeah uh, to beam out into the world it's like this is what i have to share that's attractive and yeah. that's magnetic like you said and if you think about it and uh, <laughs> i'm not just gonna keep talking here i i hate myself when i'm doing that but as you do that you find happiness so you realize that 
The fact that you do not have a spouse yet doesn't matter because you're already happy. The spouse exactly. is an extra thing. So you're still going to be happy while actively be maybe seeking for a, a relationship, but you're not dying, oh, I'm only going to go out and pursue this happy thing when I'm married. Big mistake. Do it now. Have fun now. Yeah. Life is to be yeah. enjoyed now. And while you're having fun, then you're going to be the magnet for these people. But if you still don't find because, hey, you know, you're older, it's more difficult, your area doesn't have many people, then maybe look out for a coach or a strategist to help you to find a, a better dating technique or strategy. And you're already happy. It's going to be a lot easier to find people, even to have friendships, you know, friendships are, Absolutely. are amazing. Yeah. And then we're not saying that you have to be married. You know, it's, it's a choice. But um, thank you so much for being into the show. It was so fun to talk to you. And thank you. Frank. I learned so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely to be here with you. And if we want, if you want to do it again to tackle our kind of areas, I'm very happy. You made me really um, interested in this. So yeah, let's talk about uh, the new year and we might do some new stuff together and talk more about relationships. So guys, if you have any questions about this or you want, if you want a, a specific episode about a specific issue, just ask us, ask me or Renata Gomide. We're going to put links in uh, our episode description on YouTube and on the podcast on iTunes and do leave a review. Uh, log in into your account and leave that review because it will help a lot more people to look at their thing and say, oh, what what's that create with France? Create the life you want. That's how you do it. But if you don't leave reviews, people don't really know what it is because they don't see any, any fuss about it. So make that fuss, make comments, <laughs> engage in your comments on YouTube or whatever and say, I love this. Can I know about that as well? Or even disagree with us, prove us wrong. We want to hear all the, all the um, different opinions because there isn't one size fits all. So thank you everyone for being in this chat with us and have a lovely day. And I'll see you all next week. Take care. Bye-bye.